Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is NSXT with Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, or TKG, as you might also hear it called, and this will be the short version. I will record another more detailed version after this one. So we're going to start with the differences between physical servers, virtual machines, and, con and then containers, and then moving on to Kubernetes. So I do cover this in other videos, so this will be a, a quick recap, just so that we can explain the concepts for the, uh, for the slide after this. So what I've explained before in previous videos, that if, if in um, previous days when I used to buy physical servers, um, if I wanted to deploy three applications, these across the top, I'd have to buy three pieces of hardware, uh, or three servers, and on top of each server I'd install an operating system, and then I'd install dependencies and applications. And, be, uh, and for this, in this example with physical servers, I've got three physical servers, three operating systems, and three apps and dependencies. So, And I manage the thing as a whole, one unit as a server. When virtual machines come along, I get efficiencies on hardware, so I'm able to deploy more than one operating system or more than one virtual machine on one piece of hardware. So there's an efficiency here moving from a one-to-one -one mapping between operating systems and hardware to a uh, many-to-one or multiple operating systems running on a single piece of hardware. I still install the dependencies and applications the same, but now I've reduced the amount of hardware from three to one. So there's an efficiency here, but I still have the same number of operating systems and still the same number of apps and dependencies. And I manage that as a virtual machine, and I tend to manage that through vCenter server. So next thing along is a more uh, modern way of doing things, or a more popular way of doing things now, which is moving to things called containers. So a container uh, will normally be uh, deployed on uh, an operating system with a container runtime. So typically, uh, you'll most commonly see Linux with something called Docker, with Docker being the container runtime. So a container is what it is and Docker is generally the most popular flavor of container runtime. So you'll see the terms used interchangeably. But what you'll see now is I've got three applications deployed, but it's now only deployed on a single OS with a container runtime rather than three. So there's efficiencies here now, not only in hardware, but also in operating systems. So I've got a much smaller unit to manage and it's just the application itself. So much better um, business value here because I'm delivering less and just taking care of the things that I actually want, the application and the dependency itself. So not surprisingly, containers are very popular. In fact, so popular that people now have more and more containers sprouting up. And the way to manage containers at scale is with something called Kubernetes. Um, and Kubernetes is a container management and orchestration tool. So it's a way of managing containers at scale. And what many organizations are finding is they're moving away from servers and have no physical uh, bare metal servers left or very few. They're mostly all virtual machines, but they're looking to start using containers or integrate containers. And they're looking for a way to run containers and virtual machines together. And that's exactly what vSphere 7 with Tanzu does. So vSphere 7 with Tanzu is a hypervisor that also contains a container runtime so that we can run uh, traditional virtual machines here. And we've got all the benefits of the normal tools we use to manage them. So the, these virtual machines drop onto port groups and VLANs. They go through network cards or uplink adapters. The traffic is visible on switches and firewalls and routers. So it's a well understood way of doing security on virtual machines. When we integrate uh, containers onto the platform, this is only half of the problem. So we've now got one platform for running containers and virtual machines, and we've solved that part. But the bit that can catch some IT departments by surprise is the fact that because containers have been primarily driven by developers, and developers want the easiest, simple, simplest way possible to do things, most of the networking has been designed or deployed by developers, not security professionals. And one of the things that you find in um, containers and um, container runtimes and Kubernetes is this ability to have these very simple networks or flat networks effectively around the back so that any um, container can talk to any other container either on the same um, host or hardware or even a different host or hardware. Um, so there's this flat network around the back which you might call a uh, almost like a back network or a hidden network um, and the problem with this is that, is that the security professionals don't have any visibility of what's going on here. It's great for developers because it's everything's open and flat but it's terrible for security professionals because they can't see it and they can't secure it. So it's quite possible that this container here 
could be talking directly to any other container here or even one that's not been built yet um, and that traffic isn't visible so this is a major concern for networking and security professionals because they can't see what's going on here and if you can't see it you can't secure it so even though you might have some data in a virtual machine here that's allowed to talk to that container there you've no visibility of what happens with it afterwards or what's done with it afterwards so um, we recognize this as a problem and one of the things that we can do is we can swap out this container network here for a NSX network but do it in such a way that it doesn't affect the developer or doesn't slow the developer down. So we take that network out and replace it with NSX and now that means that this um, software defined network or NSX network is now taking care of security in these containers as well. So we've stopped the ability for them to talk to each other directly or pass things on and we've now got visibility of the traffic. So we're using the same set of tools for managing traffic and security and visibility and policies on virtual machines as well as containers but in a way that doesn't um, hinder or uh, bother the developer uh, they just see it connected to a different network so this is key to it all really it's simplicity it's a common tool and it's one that people are familiar with but it gives you not only control over networking but also security and policies so that's why you would want to use nsx with containers as well as virtual machines so thank you very much for your time and i hope you found that useful